Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen and welcome to the first episode of Holiday Side Dishes. Now, with the holidays coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and, and so on, you're apt to be having a few people in for dinner or a large party, depending on what you wish to do. And so you might want to have some different side dishes. Now, I'm going to make four, I think, this month. One of them is not new, it's one that most people have during their holidays, but I'm going to be making it by a different method. Uh, today we're going to be using butternut squash, it's one of our favorite vegetables. And we're going to be using Granny Smith apples, which is nice, one of our favorite fruits. And we're going to be doing a baked butternut squash with apples. And uh, this recipe says it feeds 12. And what I'm going to be doing with all of these is keeping some out to use and then freezing a, another half of it so that when it comes to Thanksgiving or Christmas, I will have my side dishes all ready and can just remove them from the freezer because all of these will freeze very well. Sometimes you have to... Uh, leave something off like cracker crumbs or something until the time you you reheat it to to cook But other than that the whole um, Recipe can be made and frozen and ready to go and That helps reduce your stress So I'm going to take you down to the counter and I'm going to show you how we're going to get started with the butternut squash and apple recipe Be right back Okay, I have a butternut squash cut here, and I'm going to pull out this measuring cup just for the heck of it and see how much I get. It, it said five cups of squash. I just had a very nice size squash, and I'm going to use that. I'm cutting it in just about half inch pieces. They're not big. I actually have two here. When you go to buy a butternut squash, you want to buy one that has a nice, long, and firm neck because that's where 90% of your meat is. There is meat in the ball at the bottom, but you can see that it's compromised by the seeds and Uh, so you don't get as much bang for your buck. And I'm going to have more than enough squash here. And like I said, this recipe feeds, it's supposed to feed 12. And very honestly, when I peel one of these, I use um, not one of my best knives and a meat mallet because it's too hard for me to cut. Yeah. 
and I am going to preheat my oven while I'm standing here. Hold on. To I'm going to continue chopping and I'll bring you back when I've got it all chopped up. Okay, I would say I have got more than five cups, <laughs> but I think we'll just do, go with it. We're also going to need two Granny Smith apples, some nutmeg, some cinnamon, some maple syrup, and some balsamic vinegar and butter. Uh, right now I have the butter in the pan in the oven melting and then I'm going to take it out and add the cinnamon and nutmeg to it once it is melted which it hasn't quite finished melting yet so, i tell you what I'll do while I'm waiting. I don't know if you can see me. Let's see if that's melted yet. Oh. Pretty close. in a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Add the squash. Stir it 
start around to coat them. Okay, now I'm going to cover it, and I need another pot holder, hold on. And I'm putting it in the oven for 20 minutes. <phone rings> Meanwhile, I am going to peel these apples. Gosh, I almost said tomato. And these want to be in about the same size. And you're supposed to have four cups of the apples, which I think two is going to be pretty close to that.
Well, that's pretty close. I'm going to call that four. Now you want to add a quarter of a cup of the pure maple syrup. And no, I haven't got my liquid measures out. And if you don't have pure maple syrup, you can use the maple flavored syrup. And a tablespoon, we'll just eyeball that, of the balsamic vinegar. Alright, so now we have to just wait until the squash is finished in 20 minutes, so I will bring you back when it's time to bring it out. See you in a bit. Okay, the timer has gone off. So now I'm going to pour this apple mixture over on top of the squash. And cover it back up. And it's going to go back in for another 10 minutes covered, and then I'm going to uncover it, and it says 10 minutes or until the squash is done, so I'll tell you what, I will be back when it's done, and I'll let you help know how long it had to cook. Back in a bit. Okay, I've got it out of the oven, and my time is going off. And very honestly, I cooked mine almost a half hour uncovered. Uh, it depends on your oven and the degree of doneness that you like to squash. I know Bob likes his squishy, so I wanted to make sure it got squishy. <laughs> now we're not going to have this tonight, as I mentioned, I think. So I'm going to put both of these halves in these two containers. I get these from Amazon. They're like a bento box, but they're just a single section. And I'll let them cool. I'll put one in the refrigerator. We'll have it tomorrow with our roast beef. And the other one I will label and put in the freezer. And I might even get three boxes out of this. There's one last step, and it's at the time you serve this, you want to put some uh, chopped pecans on the top. But see, now you could put this in the freezer, take it out, reheat it by zapping it in the microwave, okay? Then put it in a pretty casserole serving dish if you want and top it with your pecans. Mm -hmm. 
one of these is still going to be too much, but I've got a secret what you can do with the leftover. Take a soup pot, brown up a little onion and chopped celery, chopped onion and chopped celery. Put this in it with some chicken stock. I'm just going to get some of this juice. Put this in it with some chicken stock, heat it up good, puree it, and you will have a delicious butternut squash and apple soup. It's wonderful. And I'm sure I'll have enough left over between the two of them that that's what I'll end up doing. So I'm just going to leave these uncovered for a little bit. And I'll cover them up. Let me see if I can get a taste for you. Hot. Very hot. Mmm. 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 Butternut squash with apples is elegant. It really is. And when I reheat this, I'll reheat it in the microwave. It might even soften it a little more, although the apples are very soft. I, I think I had so much squash in that pan. Mmm, that's done nicely. Give it a try. And like I said, when you serve it, serve it topped with some chopped pecans. Delicious. So there's episode number one. Now this you can go in the freezer and pull it out, zap it up, put it in a casserole dish, and you're all set. So, I will see you again on Tuesday. Hello, ceiling. <clears throat> and on Tuesday, we'll be working on the uh, yardstick swag for the coffee table in the family room. So, come along and see that. That'll be fun. But until then, I hope you try this recipe. It's really good. It's it, apples and butternut squash are a wonderful combination, and I thought it was going to be too much like, um, you know, when you have a, a um, sweet potato casserole and you put all the, the seasonings in it. We don't care for that. I'm a butter, salt, and pepper person, so is Bob. But this has a nice flavor of the apples, but the cinnamon and nutmeg are very, very um, subtle but just have a nice flavor. So give it a try. I think you'll enjoy it. Until I see you Tuesday, everybody have a great afternoon. Stay well. Take the vaccine if you can, if that's your choice. Wear your mask when needed. Keep your distance when needed. And have a great time today, and I'll see you Tuesday. Love you. Bye-bye.